Have you ever wondered why the rapture has not happened yet? It's a question that has intrigued and puzzled many. For some, it's a whispering curiosity, for others, a pressing concern. The answer to this enigma may lie nestled within the ancient scriptures of the Bible, specifically in the prophetic book of Daniel. So buckle up, as we are about to embark on an intriguing journey. To find the answer, we will journey into the prophetic pages of the book of Daniel. In the ninth chapter of the book of Daniel, we find Daniel praying to God. Amidst the grandeur of Babylon, Daniel sought divine intervention, his prayers ascended to the heavens, and in response the angel Gabriel descended, bearing a divine prophecy. This prophecy, conveyed as a conversation between the divine and the mortal, was about the unfolding of God's grand plan for humankind, encapsulated in the concept of 70 weeks. Now let's pause for a moment. 70 weeks? Does that sound like a short time? Well, not quite. When Gabriel mentioned weeks, he wasn't referring to the seven-day weeks we are accustomed to. Instead, he was alluding to heptads, a term used to denote a period of seven years. So, in essence Gabriel was revealing that the earth was scheduled to last for 70 heptads, or 490 years. Gabriel then began to break down this period into specific events. The command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem issued by Cyrus was to mark the beginning of this divine timeline. The completion of this task was to take 49 years, or 7 heptads. Following this, until the arrival of the Messiah, the Prince, Jesus Christ, there would be a period of 62 weeks, or 434 years. This time frame included the 400 years of silence, during which books such as Maccabi, Tobit, and Judith were written. Adding these periods together we reach a total of 483 years. This suggests that by the time Jesus was crucified, only seven years, or one heptad, remained in the divine timeline. This remaining heptad is destined for the people of the prince who is to come, the Antichrist, to rule over the earth. So, according to Gabriel's prophecy, the earth is scheduled to last for 490 years. Gabriel then went on to detail the timeline of these 490 years. He first laid out a period of 7 weeks or 49 years which he explained would be the time it would take for the command to rebuild Jerusalem to be completed. This wasn't simply a matter of construction, it was a prophecy, a divine mandate, a period of time set aside for a holy city to rise from the ashes. Following this initial period, Gabriel outlined a subsequent span of 62 weeks, or 434 years. This time, would stretch from the completion of Jerusalem's restoration, until the arrival of Messiah the Prince, who we now know as Jesus. This era was not a quiet one, it encompassed the so-called 400 years of silence, a period marked by the writing of books such as Maccabi, Tobit, and Judith. But Gabriel's timeline didn't end there. After these 62 weeks, the Messiah would be cut off, a phrase we now understand to mean the crucifixion of Jesus. It's worth taking a moment to reflect on this prediction, made centuries before the event it prophesied. Here, in the heart of the Old Testament, was a clear foretelling of the New Testament's most significant moment. So let's do the math. If we add the 49 years of Jerusalem's rebuilding to the 434 years leading up to the arrival of the Messiah, we get a total of 483 years. That's a significant number because it means that, by the time of the Messiah's crucifixion, there were only seven years left of the original 490-year timeline. But what about these remaining seven years? Gabriel referred to this period as one heptad, a span of seven years that would follow the Messiah's departure. This period, he explained, would be a time for the people of the prince who is to come, an ominous figure we now recognize as the Antichrist to take over the earth. By the time the Messiah was cut off, only seven years remained. And that, my friends, is where our story takes an intriguing turn. But more on that in our next scene. But what happened to these last seven years? And why hasn't the final rapture taken place? You may ask. Well, let's turn the pages of history back to the first rapture. Yes, you heard that right, the first rapture. The Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 27 records an intriguing event. After the resurrection of Jesus, the graves opened up and many bodies of saints who had fallen asleep were raised. They came out of their graves, went into the holy city and appeared to many. Then, as mysteriously as they appeared, they vanished. This event, my friends, was the first rapture. Now you may wonder what happened after that, why did the final rapture not occur immediately? For this we need to understand a crucial concept, the grace dispensation. In the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This marked a pause in the prophecy's timeline. A pause, not a stop, just a brief intermission. 
This period is called the grace dispensation. But how long is this pause, this grace dispensation? According to the scriptures, it is determined to last two days or 2,000 years. These 2,000 years are symbolized by the Pentecost and the trumpet feast. It's a time of grace, a time for humanity to accept the message of Christ and prepare for his return. And here's the thing. We've already finished these 2,000 years. We are now in the morning of the third day of Christ. So, if we're following the timeline given by the angel Gabriel to Daniel, we're right up against the edge of that momentous event, the final rapture. This brings us to a profound realization. We are now living in the morning of the third day of Christ, meaning the rapture is imminent. The last seven years of the prophecy are about to unfold. Hold on to your seats, folks, because according to the scriptures, we're in for quite a ride. So, where does this leave us today? Let's ponder on this for a moment. We're living in a time that's been called the Grace Dispensation, a pause in the divine timeline. This period is said to last two days, symbolically representing 2,000 years. But those two days have passed. We're now in the dawn of the third day of Christ, a time when the prophecy indicates the rapture is imminent. Once the rapture occurs, an event that will see believers in Christ lifted from the earth, the final seven years of Daniel's prophecy, will commence. These are the years of tribulation, a period of unparalleled hardship and strife. This is the final heptad, the last seven years in the 70 weeks of Daniel's divine timetable. But what does this mean for us, living in the present day? It's a reminder that we're existing within a celestial schedule, a timeline set out thousands of years ago. The events prophesied by the angel Gabriel to Daniel are not random happenings but part of a divine plan. And this plan, according to the interpretation of the prophecy, is reaching its climax. So, as we navigate our daily lives, we should be aware that we're part of something much larger. We're in the final chapter of a story that began with a command to rebuild Jerusalem and will end with the conclusion of the tribulation period. However, this isn't a cause for fear or despair. Instead, it's a call to reflection, to understanding, and to faith. It's a prompt to look beyond the here and now and to consider the spiritual implications of our actions and decisions. And as we stand on the brink of the third day of Christ, we should remember that each moment we live is a fraction of a far grander timeline. We're not just inhabitants of the present, but participants in a divine narrative that's been unfolding for centuries. As we stand on the brink of the third day of Christ, the prophecy of Daniel serves as a stark reminder of the divine timeline. So why has the rapture not happened yet? Let's revisit the key moments we've discussed to find our answer. We delved into the prophecy of Daniel, given by the angel Gabriel, that outlined the divine calendar of 70 weeks, or 490 years, for the earth. We examined the breakdown of these weeks into significant events. 49 years were allocated for the rebuilding of Jerusalem, followed by 434 years until the arrival of Jesus the Messiah. This timeline brought us to 483 years, leaving seven years remaining. We then journeyed through the first rapture where many saints were raised from their graves, only to disappear shortly after. This mysterious event led us to the pause in the divine timeline as proclaimed by Jesus in Luke 4, marking the beginning of the grace dispensation. This pause, symbolizing the acceptable year of the Lord, was to last two days or 2,000 years, embodying the Pentecost and the trumpet feast. As we've established, these 2,000 years have passed, placing us at the dawn of the third day of Christ. This brings us to the present where we stand on the verge of the rapture, the moment when the final seven years, the last heptad of Daniel's prophecy, will commence, marking the tribulation period. As we live in the dawn of the third day of Christ, we find our answer. The rapture has not yet happened because we are still within the grace dispensation, but the hour is near.